Hi, I'm Adam. Uh, I also go by Salt Plus Slug on the uh, on the Line forums. Uh, the wonderful people at Line have ported out Lemur, uh, which was a ultra expensive touch surface open open source controller, so you could basically make it do anything you wanted. Uh, but it has great musical application because you know it accepts MIDI and uh, OSC uh, messages. So, um, like I said, my name is Adam, uh, Salt Plus Slug on the forums. Uh, so, I was looking around, you know, I'm just learning, so I'm trying to explore as much as I can. I'm reading as much as I can on the forums, I'm reading the manual as much as I can, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm just trying to execute uh, and, and do as much as I can. Uh, so, you know, uh, that being said, uh, I, I, I know MIDI, I know MIDI pretty well, and when I saw that, uh, that Lemur does, uh, will do MIDI uh, as opposed to just OSC or whatever, and I don't have to really translate anything in there, uh, I was pretty excited. Uh, and I looked around and looked around and looked around, and I was like, man, nobody's done anything for the Moog Little Fatty. I would figure that because it's a Moog, and it's pretty much the cheap Moog at the time, well now that they've come out with the mini Taurus, you know, people I figure are probably going to jump towards that a lot, but that being said, the Moog Little Fatty is, uh, is fun, I love it, it sounds good, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty rad, uh, I, uh, I would never ever complain about owning it, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, I was like, wow, nobody's built a, uh, an interface for it. Uh, and I guess I will do it. And, uh, and so I did. You know, I've got a couple of bugs in it, and I'll point them out along the way. Uh, but uh, I would like you guys to see exactly what it is that I got going. Uh, you know, my first, my first YouTube video on this subject, I've got a, uh, I've got a, a reel out there. And if you guys want to watch that, that'd be cool too. Let me uh, leave me some feedback on it. Uh, I'm, it's a couple of school projects, uh, but I have since graduated uh, with a bachelor's degree and whatever, and uh, you know, whatever, whatever. But uh, nobody cares. So anyway, uh, here's the Moog. Uh, here's my iPad. Uh, I'm going to get up close so that you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, open my OSC remotes. Here's uh, the lemur. Uh, here's the line name coming up, and here's here's what it looks like when you first open it. Uh, this is the menu button here. You hit that, and boom, you get your uh, your menu. You get MIDI targets, projects, uh, OSC targets, uh, info. Basically, your your I/O, your your inputs and outputs for lemur and your projects. So I'm going to go in here to load project, and you can see it, Little Fatty's right here. I'm going to select it. Now I've got Little Fatty loaded. I'm going to hit done. And boom, here it is. It opens right up to the modulation page. Uh, uh, I'm pretty happy about that, you know, because it's the first uh, module, if you will, on the uh, Little Fatty. So I figured modulation, oscillator, filter, envelopes, and then arpeggiator, which I'll get to about how cool that is uh, a little bit later in the video. Uh, so yeah, it goes in order just like the synthesizer, right? Uh, and here it is, uh, so you can see it in all its glory. Um, the reason I made this is because I want to be able to affect both the LFO rate and the amount at the same time, as opposed to having to push a button, turn up one knob, and then push a button and turn up the knob again, you know, just to, to get it to line up. And at that point, I've already turned the knob out of point where that other selection is. So if I've got it on an XY pad, it's going to remain where I leave it, but uh, if I'm only dealing with this, then, you know, it's a lot easier to manipulate and be able to, you know, musically uh, uh, modulate things. So, uh, the way that the, uh, the template goes, or the interface, if you will, uh, it has the, the, uh, the modulation wheel across the bottom. Well, that's one of my bugs right now, so 
Uh, I've been leaving the modulation wheel open on the Moog because I don't know how to f I don't know what the, what the fix is. If you guys at home can help me, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, this you know pulls the modulation wheel or is supposed to, uh, and it's available on any page. So if I like flip over to my filter page, my envelope page, it's still here, and it will remain just like that the whole way through because it's actually its own object outside of another object that's that's housing everything else. Uh, so going back here to the modulation page. I have LFO rate and amount on an XY pad. Uh, I have LFO source, so it's waveform or uh, what is it, filter envelope uh, it, or the, uh, the frequency of oscillator 2 or the waveform of oscillator 2, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, it'll work off of you know, those by uh, selecting up and down here and you can actually see the light moving around the selections as I do this, right? So I'm going to put it back on saw wave. No, it was on uh, on the uh, the yeah the saw wave down here. Uh, so anyway, uh, or the triangle wave, but whatever. Uh, so I have LFO destination next to it, which is what it's going to modulate uh, the filter or the pitch uh, and a couple of other choices. It also has a second uh, LFO destination, which uh, in order to get to that. Uh, Normally, on here you have to uh, you have to menu dive, and that's not very musical. Sitting there moving around a cursor and and you know trying to figure out where that particular parameter is within the synthesizer. Here it is, you know, mappable, and you can change it on the fly and record that change uh, through the MIDI, which is super exciting in my book uh, because. I've basically effectively added a whole nother parameter to the face of the Moog. Uh, ha -ha. Uh, but anyway, so I have MIDI sync LFO, right? The LFO MIDI sync for it. Uh, and I have uh, the uh, sync time over here, right? So sync on and off and sync time here. So, uh, you know, slowest to fastest. So I think it's whole notes up at the top, whole note, whole note, and then. Uh, and then 30 second notes down here at the bottom. Uh, and then uh, on the oscillator page, I have oscillator one in green, oscillator two in blue. Uh, in the middle, I have sync on and off. Uh, so if oscillator syncs uh, on and off. And then uh, the glide on and off with glide amount here. Uh, so the way that the oscillators work and the reason that they look the way that they do, and I was able to add the Moog little fatty emblem in there, right, you know, uh, for kicks, is because uh, I was afforded the room due to the fact that oscillator one's frequency is fixed. I'm sure that you can change it by menu diving, but that is not a MIDI assignable parameter. So, uh, that being said, you know, I have the octave fader here, right, so you can choose between the four octaves that are right here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've, I've moved them to this fader and then, uh, I have wave and level on the X, Y. So, you know, down here there's, there's no level and it's what a, uh, a, a triangle wave. And then over here, there's still no level, but it's a saw or a square wave. And up here there's full level and it's a square wave versus a, tr a triangle wave over here and everything in between. Uh, and then over here on oscillator 2 I have uh, wave and frequency so here it actually is you know changing the the real tone uh, of everything and I have the level on this big fader down here uh, so uh, you, you know you can see that there uh, and like I said I have the octave is right here on this little blue fader uh, right here but so oscillator 2 is all in blue Oscillator 1 is all in green. Uh, and like I said, glide in the middle. Uh, and then on page 3, or the third page, the filter page, I have a giant XY axis uh, here uh, made by the multi ball, uh, but it's only one ball and it's on all the time and, you know, it's, it, it's not supposed to move too much, right? Uh, so uh, uh, I have, you know, 
one multiball up here for the uh, frequency and resonate or you know resonance. So uh, basically the, the the knobs you want to touch on the filter, and then down here I have uh, the uh, KB amount versus the ERG amount. But there again, that's one of the bugs that that I have going for me right now. I can't figure out why it won't respond to those particular messages. I followed uh, the manuals and I don't really get it right now. I figured, screw it, I'll move on and maybe one of you smart guys out there in TV land can, uh, can help me out. But anyway, so I have filter overdrive here, which is, you know, the, the third uh, the third parameter here on the bottom. So I have KB amount and ERG amount on that XY pad, which is a bug. And then I have over the uh, overdrive or overload uh, there. Uh, so basically, it's uh, like uh, like a distortion uh, for the filter on on a fader here, so you can turn it up and pull it back. Uh, another feature that is not on the face of the synthesizer that's included right here on a fader in nice glory and green is filter poles right so uh, you can have between one and four filter poles and uh, basically it smooths out it's like adds warmth to your uh, to your filter uh, it kind of slows it down a little bit if you will uh, so that's there on a fader I pulled it out because it's a MIDI mappable or parameter uh, so there it is uh, and then I have my envelopes here I have amp envelope across the top, I just turn my release way up, uh, and then I have filter envelope across the bottom, and they all respond accordingly if you were to select the parameter there and just just to watch the light move and move things, the lights do move, here's decay, uh, so you can see it moving up here, right, there it is, uh, so, uh, but you know, there again, uh, you know who's counting uh, and I mean you you will see that for yourself if you uh, if you download and use this there's uh, a master output level here so the full volume is you know the volume of the output is is located here on this filter uh, and then on this last page uh, I have the arpeggiator it is the arp arming as I like as I like to call it uh, it's it's actually the enable uh, so you have an enable here, and then you have a run and stop here. Uh, so you turn this to turn the arpeggiator on, and then you turn this one to say, hey, go. So you can like actually be performing along the way and, and turn it on and off as you're going and, and give yourself cool little flourishes and stuff like that through a delay or something, uh, you know, on a pedal. But anyway, uh, so it has the analog rate right here on this blue fader going, you know, this way. And then... Uh, uh, it has sync, uh, the syncing clock here, right? So you select, uh, if it's up at the top, it's uh, MIDI sync, so it's going to sync to uh, your, uh, your computer, your DAW or whatever, and down here it's going to sync to itself. It's, it's going to go uh, on its own time. It's going to guess what, whatever BPM you're using or whatever. Uh, so, uh, and it doesn't guess, you have to tell it. But anyway, whatever. Uh, and that would be done here. Uh, so if you're synced to the MIDI clock, here's your time, right? Lowest is, uh, is the fastest, slowest is up at the top. So uh, it goes like that. And then uh, our range, so the octave uh, that it's going to go to, if it's going to go doot doot, right? One octave up uh, or two octave up uh, or three versus one, two, or three going down. Uh, and then our pattern. Uh, you know, the way that the notes are going to be arranged as they come out and our mode, uh, the which, uh, you know, which direction is it going to go. Uh, so anyway, uh, I also have latch and unlatch so that you can play your chord. It will arpeggiate and hold it. Uh, it will, you know, until you uh, turn the latch off and then it will let go. So you can just be like, Bling, and, and it'll just keep going and going and going. Uh, and once again, you know, the modulation wheel is on the bottom and it's a bug and I would like some help. Uh, well anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's make this, uh, let's make this go and, uh, and see what we get. How does that sound? Uh, cool. So that's the Moog, right, playing on its own. 
I'm not doing anything, but here's here's the app. I'm gonna go ahead and start moving this. I think it's on some sort of latch mode. Uh, my my mode meaning I've got to actually touch the parameter before it controls it, as opposed to uh, or a pickup mode as opposed to a latch mode. But. So right now it's set to uh, uh, the, the reverse saw wave uh, or the forward saw wave and uh, its uh, destination is the filter uh, whereas here it is on pitch, right? Uh, so there it is on pitch, right? Just to prove that it's working. Here it is back on filter. Here's destination two, right? So they're both working at the same time now. Uh, let's go to the filter page real quick. So it's super intuitive, right? And it's got the full range of the filter in it, which is nice because maybe that sweet spot's over here and not over here, right, on the filter. And it's not always in the same spot, so I wanted to give it lots of room to move around and I wanted it to be, you know, this way because it's filter, or I'm sorry, filter frequency versus resonance, right? Resonance is up and down. So, uh, but the Moga, the Moog actually, like, I mean, really sounds good, uh, and the app is really responsive on it. Uh, so, here's oscillators. Oh yeah, you want to see the lights moving, right? Here's the lights moving on it. I'll select oscillator one, right? We'll select wave on oscillator one and move it around, right? So there's oscillator one moving around. But as you can see, right? Just to prove that it's controlling it, even though you're not seeing it here, it's still being controlled. See? The sync on and off. Here's glide. And just to prove that it's MIDI synced, I have drums. Check this out. I've actually got my mouse over here. And they'll come in in just a second. See? It works. Okay, let me mute the drums real quick. But anyway. Okay, so I'm turning the modulation down because, you know, it's down in this bottom corner as opposed to up here where it's full on, right? And, you know, any variation in between. And, uh, let's come over here.
so the arpeggiator we're gonna hit it on right it's not arpeggiating yet we'll go ahead and give it a really quick time just to be just to show it to you right off the bat and we'll hit run See? How cool is that? And if I were pl actually playing it right from my MIDI keyboard because it's got more expressionality than the, uh, or expressiveness than the keys on the Moog, uh, it's actually got a lot better velocity sensitivity, I, I think. Uh, you know, uh, so I can get more expression out of here and then I can have this sitting next to my MIDI keyboard and, uh, Oh, excuse me. Uh, I can uh, I can have it, you know, just going, uh, and then I can I can have this sitting next to it and actually control my Moog without ever actually touching it, and it's all on a touch screen. See? How, how cool is that? Life shouldn't be. That simple. <laughs> And maybe I'll put in a last page that is this and the the, the filter on the same page so that they're like, you know, you can you can do them both, right? And then affect all four parameters at the same time because of the uh, multi-touch capability, right? That's, you know, that's where it's at, right? Okay, so thanks for checking it out. Uh, you know, shoot me a message on, uh, on the, uh, on the forums on YouTube, wherever, uh, and let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you fixed my bugs. Uh, I will be posting the, uh, the template on the forums uh, or on the user library or wherever, and uh, you know, we'll rock and roll. Uh, and if you're in the Bay Area, hit me up. Uh, maybe we can jam or something. I'm, uh, I'm really into experimental music and whatnot, uh, but uh, I'm willing to uh, do anything, uh, anything you guys want to do. So, uh, have a good one.